Welcome to our Chinese Finance and Economy Briefing Program. Today, we're diving into some fascinating developments in China's economy and how they're impacting global markets. First up, despite rising tariffs and trade restrictions, the West's dependence on Chinese goods has only increased, particularly in machinery and electronics. It seems that China's goods are proving hard to resist. Next, let's talk travel. A recent survey shows that a whopping 73% of Chinese travelers are now booking their trips last minute, largely due to concerns over changing visa rules. This trend highlights the unpredictability of post-pandemic travel, with many opting for spontaneous adventures and longer stays in destinations like Egypt and France. Finally, we'll touch on the electric vehicle sector, where the EU is gearing up to vote on imposing tariffs on Chinese-made EVs. This move could have significant implications for the global auto industry, especially as Chinese manufacturers continue to break sales records. Please stay tuned for more detailed coverage on these exciting topics. South China Morning Post reports that despite increasing trade restrictions, the demand for Chinese goods in the US and EU has surged significantly over the past two decades. A study from the Mercator Institute for China Studies highlights that while China has reduced its dependency on imports from the West, the reliance of the US and EU on Chinese products has grown. In 2022, the US depended heavily on imports from China across 532 categories, a stark increase from 2000, while the EU's reliance also tripled since 2004. This continued dependency persists even as the US has imposed tariffs on various Chinese goods, particularly in the electric vehicle sector, reflecting an ongoing trade dispute that began under former President Trump. In another report by South China Morning Post, it was noted that Chinese travelers are increasingly booking trips at the last minute due to fears of sudden changes in visa regulations. A survey revealed that 73% of respondents arranged their travel plans close to their departure dates, a sharp increase from earlier this year. This trend has emerged in the wake of unpredictable immigration rules stemming from the pandemic and geopolitical tensions, leading to a preference for familiar destinations. Despite the risks of higher prices for late bookings, Travelers are adapting to the situation, with a notable shift towards independent travel experiences that offer cultural and culinary adventures, as evidenced by a significant rise in bookings for international cruises and car rentals. Lastly, the South China Morning Post highlights the impending vote by the EU on imposing tariffs on Chinese electric vehicles, which could lead to punitive rates of up to 35.3%. This decision is critical for both the EU and China as it comes at a time when Chinese EV manufacturers are facing intense competition domestically and abroad. Amidst this backdrop, Chinese EV companies are reporting record sales driven by aggressive discounting strategies. The article also touches on discussions between Chinese and U.S. officials regarding EV tariffs, illustrating the complex dynamics of the global electric vehicle market, where both nations are vying for technological supremacy in autonomous driving and electric mobility. The Sydney Morning Herald reports that China's recent monetary policy measures, which included over $100 billion in funding to support the stock market and a series of rate cuts, have sparked a significant surge in the CSI 300 index, which has risen more than 18% in just a week. This intervention by the People's Bank of China PBOC, aims to restore confidence amid a backdrop of declining property values and a struggling economy. Despite this short-term market exuberance, the underlying issues remain, with over 90 million empty homes and a vast number of unfinished apartments in the country. The government's focus on boosting property purchases in Tier 1 cities may temporarily alleviate some pressures, but it does not address the systemic challenges faced by second- and third-tier cities. The need for a comprehensive solution that includes fiscal policy and structural reforms is increasingly urgent as the PBOC alone cannot refloat the economy. The diplomat highlights the abrupt shift in China's economic policy as the PBOC finally embraced significant monetary easing after months of resistance. The central bank's actions, including a reduction in the main policy rate and the introduction of a fund for capital markets, caught many off guard and led to a remarkable recovery in the stock market. However, the real test lies ahead, whether the government will implement effective fiscal measures to stimulate household consumption and stabilize the beleaguered property market. The ideological rigidity that previously hampered pragmatic policy adjustments has now given way to a more interventionist approach, but the long-term sustainability of this shift remains uncertain, particularly given the fragility of household wealth tied to real estate. In a follow-up analysis, the diplomat explores the implications of China's recent market rally, which has injected approximately $1.8 trillion into its stock exchanges. 
The rally, buoyed by aggressive monetary and fiscal measures, raises questions about its longevity amidst persistent economic challenges, including declining manufacturing activity and geopolitical tensions. While the market's immediate response has been overwhelmingly positive, analysts caution that without sustained reforms and a resolution to the real estate crisis, the rally may be fleeting. Comparisons to Japan's past economic bubbles serve as a warning that without addressing deeper structural issues, including local government debt and household spending, the current euphoria could quickly fade, leaving the economy vulnerable to further downturns. South China Morning Post reports that five leading Chinese electric vehicle EV, manufacturers, including BYD, Li Auto, and Xpeng, achieved record monthly sales in September, driven by aggressive discounts and promotions aimed at younger consumers. The momentum in the EV market is attributed to a surge in new model launches and heightened consumer interest, leading to BYD shipping a staggering 419,426 vehicles, marking a 12.4% month-on-month increase. Other companies also saw impressive growth, with Li Auto and Xping setting their own delivery records. This trend highlights a significant shift in consumer preference towards electric cars, with EVs accounting for over half of all vehicle sales in China, underscoring a notable cultural shift among younger drivers who prioritize environmental sustainability and advanced technology in their vehicle choices. South China Morning Post also discusses China's latest economic stimulus measures announced by the People's Bank of China, PBOC, which include cuts to mortgage rates and a reduction in the reserve requirement ratio. While these initiatives aim to alleviate financial pressures on homeowners and real estate developers, economists warn that they fail to address the fundamental issue of China's economic imbalance, characterized by over-reliance on investment and insufficient domestic consumption. The article emphasizes the need for a structural shift towards consumption-driven growth, suggesting that without increasing household income and improving social safety nets, These measures may only provide temporary relief and risk inflating asset prices rather than fostering genuine economic vitality. The discussion reflects a broader concern about the sustainability of China's growth trajectory and the necessity for meaningful reforms. South China Morning Post further highlights a resurgence of retail investors in China's stock market, as individual investors rush back to buy stocks amidst a bullish rally reminiscent of a decade ago. With the Shanghai Composite Index soaring by over 20% in late September, many investors, including those who had previously shunned the market, are eager to capitalize on the momentum. This renewed enthusiasm is fueled by recent policy signals from the government indicating a pivot towards easing and support for the property sector. However, some investors express caution, recalling the volatile nature of the market, particularly the rapid rise and fall experienced in 2015. Analysts suggest that for the current rally to be sustainable, it must be supported by genuine economic improvements and a break from the existing debt deflation cycle. This dynamic illustrates the mixed sentiments among investors as they navigate the rapidly changing landscape of China's financial markets. South China Morning Post reports that luxury home sales in Shanghai and Shenzhen have surged following a historic stimulus package aimed at revitalizing the economy. Wealthy buyers have snapped up approximately 360 flats worth a staggering 20 billion yuan, 2.85 billion US dollars, as optimism about economic recovery grows. In Shanghai's Huangpu district, the Lakeville Phase 6 project saw all 108 flats sold on the first day, generating around 12 billion yuan, while Aunt and Suhui district quickly sold all 178 units, priced between 15 million and 33 million yuan, within just an hour. Meanwhile, in Shenzhen, the Arcadia Bay project found buyers for nearly half of its 152 flats in a single day, pulling in over 2 billion yuan. The recent easing of mortgage rates and down payment requirements by the People's Bank of China is expected to benefit around 150 million homeowners, saving them a combined 150 billion yuan annually. This wave of luxury home purchases reflects a renewed confidence in the market, despite previous concerns about rising supply and economic challenges. Major cities like Guangzhou, Shanghai, and Shenzhen have also relaxed home purchase restrictions, further fueling buyer interest. Experts suggest that the demand for premium downtown properties is driven by a desire for asset protection amid limited investment options, with many affluent buyers poised to invest in high-end homes as new properties are launched. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6Do team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide.
we encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6 Do Brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6 Do team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6 Do Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6 Do Brief via email. Got a book so big and bright Open it and take a flight Learn about the stars and see Everything is here for me